I'm milling about with Haley Law. There she is. And she's starring in Echo Boomers. Hi, Haley. Hi. So nice to meet you. I just moved into this house. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> it's a lot cleaner than uh, the last time I saw it. There's a smashed up glass all over the ground. <laughs> Walk me through those days. What was that like for you to shoot those scenes? Um, it was great. It was it was really fun. And I didn't realize how much I would enjoy breaking stuff. <laughs> it felt great. I would love to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you at all, did you ever feel like, oh my God, a piece of glass is gonna go into my eye? Yes, I did. Um, they, the, the, the one where I'm with the golf club on the China cabinet, the, out, the, the initial first part of the glass was like plexiglass or something, but the inside, everything was real glass. So I was just like, they were like, just be a little careful with the stuff inside. And I was like, okay. So I'm trying to like get angry and smash it, but also be mindful of the real pieces inside flying at my eyes. Um, thank God it didn't but it was a little scary. <laughs> so what goes through your mind when you're doing those scenes? Like, how do you get all that so much anger up to like- You would be surprised how easy it, it comes up. Um, yeah, I, th we only had one take of it because you can't really reset broken glass. So I was just like, okay, I have to really get pissed off. And they just yelled action and I was just, was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you're just winding up, you're just like holding, getting ready to release so much stuff that you didn't even know you were holding on to. <laughs> it's a good acting exercise in a way too, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. So of course, Echo Boomers, is for those of you who don't know who they are, they are the children of baby boomers. And I think you're a millennial, yeah? I am a millennial. Yeah, so how would you describe what, people feel about your generation how would you yeah i think that people um i think people get frustrated with frustrated with millennials um but i think millennials are very passionate and want our dream tr chasers at the end of the day and a lot of people my, my parents had my sister and me and my brother when my mom was 22 so i think that she didn't really have the opportunity to uh she had two kids by the she had th almost three kids by the time she was my age so she didn't have the opportunity or the mind the time to even think about all these things that i'm saying oh my god i'm too young to have kids and my mom had three kids and she was my age and it's just it's just a different time and i understand why my parents and my grandparents are like uh you're so whiny, like you have everything, you're fine. But I'm like, no, I need more. And I think millennials want dreams to come, their dreams to come true, their wildest dreams to come true. Not even just, you know, it's more than the norm now. We want crazy things and we will do what we got to do to get them. <laughs> One thing that drives me absolutely crazy, and I don't know if this is who you are, is mm -hmm. phones at dinner time. Oh, and I hate it. Oh, I worst. hate it. I don't like that. The whole the phone thing, though. I I I feel so grateful that I wasn't in high school when Instagram and stuff was such a big thing because I hate phones. I hate it. And when you don't answer in two seconds, people are mad. It's just like let me just live. And I want to eat dinner, and I don't want to hear it vibrate. And I just want. I don't like the phone thing. I don't, that millennial, that is a, that is a, a problem with millennials, I will say. So your mother says to you, no phones at, at meals and that, that definitely sticks. It, yeah, it would. I haven't lived with my mom in a while, but, and, and when we all lived at home, I don't know if we had cell phone or it wasn't a big, there wasn't much to do on the, on the cell phone. So it was, it wasn't like having it next to you. You know, it's like, it's like a soother for a baby now for a lot of people. It's, you have to have it on you at all times. Leave with it next to you. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like a pacifier. Totally. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a totally a pacifier. And you mentioned um, feeling passionate. 
at your age. So what are the causes that you're most passionate about these days? Um, I mean, I think there's just so many things that I want to tackle that it's a lot. And not that it's not realistic to do all these things, but I want to accomplish so much work-wise and I want to have access and a voice that people listen to and a platform to be able to do good things for the world, even small, small things like um, donate to the food bank or, you know, I want to do, I want to, especially seeing the last couple of months, I want to start something that helps young people learn about politics, not in a, the way that people talk about it, uh, politics on the news, sometimes it's hard, especially if you're young, it's hard to understand what's going on, but I want to, I want to start like a website or an, or an app because everybody loves their phones or just something to educate people and, you know, uh, learn about propositions and like how to help everyone. And I don't know, I just want to, I want to do things. I want to, yeah, there's so many things I want to do, but it's, it's hard. It's, this, I just, that's another thing that may, maybe is a millennial thing. There's just like a thousand things I want to do and I just can't focus on one. On one. Let's, let, let's talk this through, Haley. Like, where would you start with something like that? I think it's a really I don't know. Crazy, a great idea. I also, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know where to start. I, I, I want to talk to a political figure about it because I don't know where to start. And, and also I thought I'm from Vancouver, but I live in LA now. And it's so hot. Well, it's not super hot right now, but I feel like because it's so hot here and I couldn't do this in Vancouver because it rains and it's freezing most of the year, but I feel like we got to do something about maybe having like an outdoor shower thing for homeless people and they can come and get some like, I don't know, a, a food truck, pair it with a food truck and have like them be able to get food and book a time for a shower and get food and like a towel and like a sweater or something. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know where to start. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta figure all this out. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're still young enough. I mean, I feel like I'm so happy to have met you at a time in your career when I think you just have like three or four movies under your belt, mm -hmm. which is so exciting. It's like you're, you're a baby in this business and it's so cool to see what you've accomplished already. Thank you so much. So what do you remember most about your debut in Riverdale? Um, what are those like fondest memories that come up for you? I, working with everyone was so great. And that was the first, um, that was my first TV job. Um, <clears throat> and working with people like that I had, wa I mean, I grew up watching Cole and um, I was a fan of Luke Perry and I had watched Lachlan Monroe a bit and I just, it was really cool to watch people that I've seen before and kind of pick up on how to be on a set and how to be professional. And they're all so, so sweet and great at what they do. And I learned so much on that job. Mm, yeah. Uh, do you guys still sort of get together and 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 have Zoom chats like this? And I definitely still talk to everyone, but coronavirus has made it hard. It's made it really hard. But yeah, I still talk to everybody on the show, and it's great. And we check in and see how everyone's doing, and it's really really nice. So speaking of um, co-stars, I want to talk about Patrick Schwarzenegger. You were with a quote Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Patrick Kennedy anyway. <laughs> yeah, my mom says. <laughs> so yeah, what, it's cool. Patrick's really great. And you know what? From uh, such a huge family, such a crazy famous family, he's so kind and down to earth. And um, they're all really nice. Arnold met Arnold and Maria, and they're both so, so sweet. It's all right, so tell really, me, they're a really nice family. Tell me that story about meeting Arnold and Maria. I want to hear the story. Um, to be honest, I didn't know who Maria was. So he was just like, oh, this is my mom. And she was so sweet. And she was there for a couple of days. And I, I think I said something to my mom about Patrick's mom came to set. And she was like, oh, my God, Maria. Oh, my God, is she nice? And I was like, yeah, 
is she who is she she's super cool and I had no idea but um of course when Arnold was there everybody was just like it's like seeing a Disney character in real life but he was cool every if everybody was really cool like and just normal and I don't get um starstruck and I feel like seeing Arnold is the person you would get starstruck with because he's like not it just feels like he's a fictional character but he's just normal and cool yeah like the things that would come out of your mouth you know that arnold would say in his movies and you'd have to stop yourself yeah. <laughs> i know yeah everybody was like oh my god i almost made an arnold reference i almost made a terminator reference and i was just like i don't know any so i can't do <laughs> i don't know maybe seen terminator once a long time ago have you um have you been invited to the family dinner yet because i understand that maria is very strict about people standing up for her in the room did you hear this no <laughs> yeah. what is it yeah at family dinners she wants everybody to stand up when she enters the room i like it i like it if that's if that really is how it is i like it and i want to experience it so you're waiting for your invitation i'm waiting for my invitation <laughs> And what about Alex? Alex Pettifer. God, he's so cute. And that accent, yeah. I would die. Yeah. He didn't I have an accent yeah. in the movie, but he has an accent. Yeah. In I didn't know he had an, I didn't really, like, I knew who he was kind of, but I didn't know he had an accent or anything. So when we all got together, I was like, is he faking this? <laughs> or does he have an accent in the movie or is this just real life? Like, I didn't really, I didn't know. I had, I didn't know him really I had just like like I've seen Magic Mike and I and I they were like oh this is the guy from Magic Mike and I was like who and then I looked back and I was like oh yes didn't know he had an accent but yeah I was I was a little thrown off I was like is this for the movie or is he just trying to play us right now <laughs> <laughs> did you guys do things together to sort of bond as a group did you did you hang out and such? Yeah, we went for dinner a few times and we shot it in a short amount of time. So there wasn't a ton of opportunities to do things. But as soon as we would all wrap at the same time, if we weren't dead tired, we would go for dinner or have a drink. if We didn't have to wake up insanely early, which was rare. But it was great. On the weekends, we definitely all did some stuff. Utah is beautiful, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Were you near I Park wish I City? Um, we went to Park City. I think it was, we were like 45 minutes, maybe an hour away from Park City, but uh, it was so nice. I wish we could have explored more. It was so, so beautiful. It's like a different planet in some places. I know, I know. And some of the, the houses, like the one the one behind This me, one you're in right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They exist. Insane. Yeah, I thought we were going to be on a set and we walked into the house and I was like, who lives here? It was amazing. The houses are insane. But you didn't get to stay in a house like this while you were shooting. No, I was like, let's just stay here. Let's do it. There's a movie theater in the basement. Let's do it. Like, and a, and a basketball court on the other side of the house. I couldn't believe it. I'd be scared to stay there by myself, though. It was, some of the houses were massive. And nobody was, like, up for the challenge of, like, getting sleeping bags and just crashing and... I would have. There was, like, a, a man who, whoever lived in the house was out of town or something, and they had, like, a caretaker there, and I was like, so... You probably couldn't find me if I stayed here. <laughs> I would have loved to have they have a big movie night, a basketball game, and then sleeping bags. No, not sleeping bags. There was like 40 rooms. <laughs> we could have all figured it out. Yeah, just like jump on top of the bed and throw pillows. Yeah. I get yeah. you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. What about the mask? Did you keep your mask? I wish. I wanted to. I really wanted to. I want to see if we can still get them. Because I, I love having something from the projects that I do. I love keeping something, you know, just having some sort of memory. And I don't want to keep the jumpsuit. So the mask would be great. <laughs> what have you kept from other things that you've done? 
What have I? I have like uh, like a pair of earrings, probably from Riverdale. Um, maybe a pair of cat ears. I have these. Um, well, we got Paramount sent us um, Converse with like the spontaneous logo and like some blood splatters on it. So that is definitely something I can keep uh, as a memory from the movie. But I try and I try and take. I want to. Yeah, there's. A, I try and not take, but I try and get something. Cause I like, I like having a little memory box. Yeah. I loved spontaneous, by the way, that movie was Thank really you. fun. Thank you. I don't want to yeah. spoil it for anybody, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> for those who haven't seen it yet, it's very gory. <laughs> it is definitely very gory. My mom was getting scared. She was like, ah, I can't, I can't, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put on mute or something. And I was like, what? It's a movie and I'm in it. <laughs> It's not scary. So that's fun that your that your mom is watching the, the films that you're doing and she supports mm -hmm. your career. Yeah, she does definitely. Both my parents are very supportive. I have one coming out that is a little bit raunchy and I don't think my dad can watch it, but he's like, no, it's fine. I, I get it. It's just a movie. It's just acting. And I was like, don't want you to see it still. <laughs> still don't want you to see it. Are we talking uh, Mark, Mary, and some other people? So yeah. how, is, how is that raunchy? Well, it's about a couple who decides to have an open relationship to kind of spice things up or keep it interesting. And it gets a little crazy. <laughs> gets a little crazy. And it's the first thing I think I've done that I, I don't want my parents to watch. But I loved it it's <laughs> such a great movie like it's just funny and hannah marx is great and she wrote it and directed it and it's it's really a special movie so is there nudity in to that extent or not 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 too much but i just feel like i don't even want my parents to see me make out with somebody <laughs> i don't know something about it i'm just like no because my parents still think i'm a like I'm still the baby. I'm the middle child, but I'm still the baby. So I just don't want them to, I don't want them to know I'm an adult yet. <laughs> right. And it's kind of, I think that would be kind of weird too, like for your, mm -hmm. your parents to, and to see yeah. you naked on a 45 foot screen, if and when that happens, I, I, I run. <laughs> Not for me. No, 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 no. They can't. <laughs> they can't. You know what else is really cool about you? Another talent that you have that I don't know that other people know about is that you can sing. Oh, yeah, I like to, I make music too. I love it. It's really fun. Do you have like ambitions to put an album out that, you know, and other actors are doing as well? Yeah, I have um, a few songs out and I, I want to put an album out, but I just am so critical. I'll ha I have like 15 songs, but I'm like, mm, no, I need to make more. I need to make more. I need to make more. So I'm hoping that um, I can kind of figure that out soon and do shows hopefully soon um, when it's safe. But yeah, it's it's a great balance doing both because when one, when one starts to frustrate me, I can kind of jump to the other one. And what would be the title of your, of your album, your, your CD, sorry. My CD. <laughs> um, I have an album done that is titled Touch, but um, yeah, that's that's going to be the first album title. It's called Touch. I like it. And it's done. I'm just being slow about putting it out. <laughs> How would you describe the music? I think it's very, it's like R&B pop. It's very fun and um, like uplifting. It's it's not, it's not, it's not heavy. I, I, I want it to be very, like, I want you to be able to play it front to back and not skip anything. So I feel like hopefully I've accomplished that. And, and my final question is sort of the ideas that inspire what you write about. Cause I know you're passionate obviously about life and a lot of things <laughs> that we've talked about. <laughs> it could be anything, honestly, sometimes really anything so food people experiences people always ask me if i write like a love song or something like who'd you write this about 
I'm like, I wrote it about a guy who held the door open for me. And I just ran with it. I don't know what I, I wrote it about like a, an experience that I blew up out, out of, from nothing. I wrote it about the guy who did the latte art at, at, the, at the coffee shop. Like, I don't know, just anything. Sometimes I look at the misconnections on Craigslist and then I'm like, I'm going to write about this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting tune. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just like read something that somebody wrote and then I'll just think about that encounter and then I just run with it with a crazy imagination. Come over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you because turned a little bit, I was like, there's someone at the door. <laughs> <laughs> there are people behind me, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. hiding them. <laughs> They're blocking them, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Haley, for joining me. It was so thank sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really great. Stay safe. You too. Bye. Bye. Always news. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.